what's good youtube welcome to my channel cooking and chilling with kenny that's me today i'm going to be showing you how to make one of my favorite meals smothered pork chops here's what all you need four to six slices of pork chops i use six slices i also use black pepper accent better than bouillon chicken paste some extra virgin olive oil uh, that's seasoning salt, Morton seasoning salt uh, not my preferred one but you could use that onion powder garlic powder kitchen bouquet for color one small yellow onion one half of a red bell pepper and half of a green bell pepper okay so the first thing you want to do is wash your meat i didn't put that clip in but you most definitely want to wash your meat first i don't care what the fda says wash your meat guys so once i had mine washed and patted dry you can see i'm starting to add my seasonings now i don't have an exact measurement for you but I would recommend that you use your own judgment, uh, season it as little or as much as you would like. I normally season mine a little liberally at first. That way I don't have to go back and do too much seasonings or add too much seasonings rather to the uh, gravy once it comes out of the oven or before it goes in the oven, I should say. So once we have our meat seasoned on both sides, we can go ahead and heat our oil up. I have my olive oil added to the pot already to my Dutch oven. Um, you don't have to use olive oil. You could use vegetable oil or you could use uh, leftover chicken grease, which gives it a totally different flavor. So what I did is I tested my oil to make sure that it was hot enough. And it could have been a little bit hotter, but still we rolled with it. And next you'll see me add my uh, pork chops to it. And you want to let these brown really good on both sides before you flip it so just add it there and just let it sit until it uh, has that perfect brown crust on one side before you flip it and you also want to make sure that these are at room temperature if you put cold pork chops in there um, it's going to definitely be too cold going to bring the temperature down and when you flip it the crust is going to come off okay so our pork chops have been frying for about five or six minutes on this side uh, what you're going to see me do now is I'm going to come in and I'm going to give it a flip and it should definitely have that golden brown color that you would like if you don't have that color yet definitely turn it back over and let it go a little bit longer and these pork chops were so huge that I could only get two of them in the pot at one time but um, you definitely want to let it sit on the side also for about five to six minutes until it reaches that golden brown color and then you could repeat the process until all of your chops are done okay so now that our pork chops have been cooking for five to six minutes on the other side we're going to go ahead and take them out before we start the process all over with the rest of them and excuse me while i almost knock over the camera i just forgot that thing was there Okay, so after we got our pork chops browned off, I added a little bit more olive oil to the pot. And then I'm going to come in with my vegetables and we want to get those cooking just a little bit. You don't have to cook those completely done because it's going to go in the oven for an hour and a half to two hours. So that'll give it more than enough time to come to become completely tender. Okay, so with our vegetables cooking for a little while, I probably could have added a little bit more. Uh, olive oil and I just went on ahead and added my flour and we just want to cook this a little bit until it gets rid of that raw flour taste not necessarily looking for color with this because I'm going to be using my kitchen bouquet and that's going to give me uh, all of the color that I need for my gravy Okay, so after we let the flour cook for a little while to remove that raw taste, I'm going to come in and I'm going to add in two cups of water. Um, 
Don't ask me why it was pointed that slow, but two cups of water. I just want to give that a stir until all of that flour is dissolved. And that's not enough water, so you're going to see me. I'm going to come back in, and I ended up adding another cup and a half of water. And again, you just want to give that a good stir. Okay, so what I'm doing to this now is I'm adding a little bit more uh, black pepper. I'm also going to be adding some more uh, onion powder to this. But I didn't add any more accent or any more uh, garlic powder because I didn't want anything to kind of overpower it. And I didn't add any more seasoning. So because this uh, chicken bouillon piece that I'm adding now has a high salt content. And anything extra would definitely put it over the top with too much sodium. So you definitely want to leave out that uh, seasoning. So. Okay, so now that all of that is dissolved, let's check it for the seasoning. Let's see how everything tastes. Thumbs up. All right. Now we want to add a little color to this, so let's add a little kitchen bouquet. Yes, I do know how to brown my flour to make gravy, but I didn't want to. So be careful adding this. You don't want to add too much because it could make your gravy real bitter. Okay, so now it's time to add our pork chops down into this. I put my thick slices down first because they're going to take the longest to cook. So you definitely want those closer to the heat. And I didn't think that I was going to be able to get all of those big pork chops inside of this pot. But one by one, we made it work. You just want to make sure that they all are kind of submerged. So finally, after we got all of our chops in the pot, um, all of it submerged as much as could be, um, I went on ahead and I covered this with uh, aluminum foil and I put it in the oven for an hour and a half to two hours. These are so thick that they took about two hours. Okay, so after two hours, I took it out of the oven. Uh, I forgot to record that part, but took it out of the oven and this is what you have now this gravy isn't uh, what I wanted it to be because pork gives off so much water sometimes that it made my gravy a little loose so what I did is I just put it back on the stove and covered it uh, for about 10-15 minutes and then that'll uh, thicken your gravy a little bit more if you like I like mine a little bit thicker than this so just give it an extra 10 or 15 minutes. All right, guys. So after 10, 15 more minutes on the stove, this is what we have. This is absolutely perfect. This is the consistency that I wanted in my gravy. It's actually cooked down a little bit more. Food chops are falling off of the bone tender. That's what I want in smothered pork chops. Alright guys, if you like my first video on YouTube, please give me a comment, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, there's definitely more content coming soon, and I hope to see you all again in the next video, I'm going to add a video at the end uh, of the final plating, I recorded it in around orientation, but still, that's all part of the learning curve. Alright guys, peace.